Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hope you guys are doing well For those who are new to my channel, my name is Harold You can also call me Firdaus, that is my Muslim name And for those who have been here before, welcome back We have just uploaded a new video and I hope you like this one so today what I'll be sharing with you is the greatest and one of the most beautiful chapters in the Quran which also happens to be one of my favorites. I hope that by sharing this video there'll be more people interested to find out more about Islam through the Holy Quran and come to appreciate the meaning and literary beauty and perfection of this chapter along with how it brings one closer to the Almighty. But before we continue, I'd just like to ask that you support my channel by hitting the subscribe and the like button and turning on your notifications so that you'll be updated as soon as a new video is up. And if you think this video is beneficial for you, please go ahead and share it with others. So why is this one of my most favorite and dearest chapter in the Holy Quran? It is called Surah Al-Fatiha. It was the first chapter taught to me by Ustaz Saif Rahman when I was on my journey discovering more about Islam. It is also the first chapter that got me tearing when I was reciting it and got me inspired to find out more about the Quran. When I'm reciting it, I always feel like I'm actually having a deep and personal, intimate conversation with God. And another thing amazing for me as well is that this chapter contains seven verses and for someone like me who has never learned or studied Arabic before, I was surprised that I could actually memorize this in just seven days. But before we go on to dive deeper into this chapter, I think it'd be great if we have an understanding about the Quran and how it come about. So that will help frame our thoughts about how miraculous is the revelation of every single verse, how it's actually the literal word of God and how it's still a living miracle even today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an through the angel Gabriel, Jibril, to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him, across a span of 23 years. So it did not come to him in its entirety as a single book, but it came to him as verses over time. Sometimes they were revealed to him as a single verse, and sometimes as a full chapter. And the angel Gabriel, Jibril, revealed the first five verses of the Qur'an during one of his isolated retreats in one of the mountains away from Mecca in the cave of Hira. The angel Gabriel, Jibril, came to him and asked him to recite word for word because he was an illiterate, which means he couldn't read or write. And this is an important fact to note because our dear Prophet Muhammad wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, would repeat every single word that was given to him. And the people were amazed at how eloquent he was given that he was an illiterate. Literacy was also a common feature and almost universal in the Arab community before Islam. Pre-Islamic Arabian traditions, poetry and stories were transmitted orally from person to person and therefore the Qur'an was not a physical book but it was passed down by oral tradition from generation to generation. Therefore, even if there were no physical book of the Qur'an today, the Qur'an would still be living in the thoughts and memory of every single person who memorized and recited it. So now that we've gotten a bit of an understanding of how the Qur'an came about, let us move on to Surah Al-Fatiha and how it is the greatest verses that were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to our dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace and blessings be upon him. Although Surah Al-Fatiha was not the first verses that were revealed, it is placed as the first chapter in the Holy Qur'an. It is also the first complete chapter, surahs, that was given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace and blessings be upon him. Muslims around the world will recite this chapter 17 times across their five daily prayers every single day. Muslims will start praying Surah Al-Fatiha first before beginning any other verse in the Holy Qur'an. Surah Al-Fatiha, which translated to English as the opener in the Holy Qur'an, is like a preface or prologue to the entire Qur'an. So you can think of it like an introduction to a book before you read it and find treasures within it. But more importantly, what's so beautiful about it being called the opener is that this chapter is like the opener of hearts. For once you receive faith, knowledge, guidance, and more blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From this theme, it becomes clear that the relationship of the chapter of Surah Al-Fatiha and the Quran is not that of an introduction to a book, but that of a prayer and its answer. And why is this important? Because when you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, you're actually having an intimate and personal conversation with God before you begin anything in the Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha is also described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran as one of the most highly praised and repeated verses in the Quran. You can find this in chapter 15, Surah Al-Hijr, verse 87. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَزِيمِ 
And basically what it says is that, and we have bestowed upon thee the seven most repeated verses and the great Quran. And an interesting to note about this particular Arabic word, Al-Mathani, used in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has very profound meaning in it. And you can find out more about this through these amazing scholars, Numan Ali Khan and Mufti Mank. I've put the link to their videos down below. Besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning that Surah al fatiha are the seven highly praised and most repeated verses in the Quran, our dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him, also mentions about its ability to ward off evil, offering protection, and heal the person, both the spiritual and physical sense. It is also important that we as Muslims should recite this surah repeatedly with deep understanding so that we can renew our faith and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and to be grateful for all the things that He has blessed us with. So now let us move on to look deeper and appreciate the beauty of Surah Al-Fatiha and these verses that are within it. But before we move on, I would just like to recommend that whenever you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, that you contemplate on the 99 beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it will help frame your thoughts and appreciate the beauty of this particular Surah. So we start off by understanding the structure of Surah Al-Fatiha. If you see Surah Al-Fatiha, is divided into four parts. The first part, verse 1, we give salutations to the Almighty. Followed by verse 2, 3 and 4, we give adoration to the Almighty. In verse 1, we start with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And that means the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Over here, we can see that the servant is recognizing the benevolence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that He is the most merciful and gracious God. By reciting Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, we are also showing our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being so merciful to us and understanding that only through His mercy that we are able to enter paradise. Moving on to verse 2, we said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Basically what it means is praise be to the Lord. And the word Rob, when translated to English means Lord, also stands for the master, the owner, the sustainer, the provider, the guardian, the sovereign ruler of the entire world and universe. What is beautiful about this is we sing praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling Him the King, and the Lord of the worlds and the universe. Now moving on to verse 3 and 4, as I mentioned, it's the verses of adoration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see verse 3, where we start to repeat these beautiful words of Ar-Rahman Rahim. And the word Ar-Rahman, when translated to English, means the most beneficent, the most gracious. The word Rahim here means the most merciful. So from this we can see that out of the 99 names that we use to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these two particular attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are repeated because they are the most important for us to take note. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that He is the most gracious, the most beneficent and the most merciful to come to, to ask for help. And as I've mentioned before, that is only through His mercy that we can enter paradise. Moving on to verse 4, Maliki Yawmiddin. This basically means master of the day of judgment or the day of reckoning. And through this verse, we are reminded that there will be a day of judgment where all our efforts to get closer to God and to serve Him will be rewarded. We are also acknowledging that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. And therefore, as brothers and sisters, we should not be judging each other or anyone else in this world and leave the judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the most just. And by recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just, we are also acknowledging that He has knowledge of the seen and the unseen in this world. Therefore, we should always remain steadfast in our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to always strive to do good and to avoid committing sins and to balance both our strive for success in this world and for the hereafter. To move on to verse 5, you come to see that we are now submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This basically means to you alone we worship and to you alone we seek help. We are recognizing that it is only through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should seek help and that He is self-subsisting which means He is self-reliant and there's nothing above Him. He is the source of all providence, abundance and sustenance for He is ever providing. Finally, moving on to verse 6 and 7, we can see that we are offering out our supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> which basically means, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please show us the way to the straight path. And 
and that is verse 7 which basically means that the path of those that you have bestowed your grace upon and not of those who have earned your wrath or are misguided or have been led astray. And what are one of the most important things to ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for guidance to the straight path. For the path of true guidance is clear and straight. And finally, we conclude the prayer with Amin, which is Yes, Lord. Now that we've gone through these seven verses, let us look deeper at the linguistic beauty of this as you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually comes closer to you when you recite this particular surah. And how is it so? Is when we identify the grammatical persons used in the surah, as you see, it changes from third person all the way to first person. Grammatical persons are basically languages sets of personal pronouns. Put in simple colloquial English for first person in a sentence, we see the words I, we, us, and me. And for second person, it's the person or people spoken to, literally you. And third person includes all that is not mentioned before. So let us look at how these grammatical persons are used in these seven verses of Surah Al-Fatiha. When we look at verse 1 to 4, we realize that it is in neutral tense. We are basically proclaiming, announcing, and declaring to the universe all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you realize that we are speaking from the third person. And in verse 5, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala getting closer to us when we start to speak to Him from the second person as if we are having a conversation. When we say, to you alone we worship and to you alone we seek help, it's like we're having an intimate conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we as the worshipper are seeking His help. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets closer to us right now. Moving on to verse 6 and 7, we see that the grammatical persons has now shifted from second person to first person. Lead us to the straight path of those you have bestowed your favour and not of those who have earned your wrath and have gone astray. And there we can see that by His grace and mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now with us and leading us to the straight path. And from this can you see in colloquial English how beautiful is the transition of grammatical persons in this entire chapter. Can you imagine if we understood it in Arabic how profound it would be? It's like we as a servant entering a castle, giving our salutations and praises to the Lord of the worlds, and then He sits beside us as we have a deep and personal conversation with Him and He answers our need for guidance by leading us to the straight path. And that is not all. What's so amazing about this is also that, besides the eloquence and beauty of this entire chapter, it's actually being recited by a person who is an illiterate, our dear Prophet Muhammad wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, who couldn't read or write. So now as promised, here's the entire recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم كان عبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Thank you for watching and I hope you found this beneficial for you. If you like what I'm sharing, please continue to subscribe and like and to turn on your notification button so that you're informed as soon as a new video is up. And to my dear Muslim brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And for everyone out there, I hope you have a beautiful and wonderful day ahead. Bye!